All right. Caleb's got us all um, recorded and going there. So I will kick things off and, and get us officially started. So thank you all for um, joining us today. We greatly appreciate that. It's always good to see, um, to see you all. And we'll be learning more about the National Health Service course today. And the webinar is being recorded, as Caleb just indicated, and it will be posted to our website as well. We'll send the slides and the recording to you all, um, to the participants at the end of um, once it's recorded and uploaded to our um, website. My name is Kim Mayo. I am the program manager with the National Rural Health Resource Center, which is providing the webinar today. We love to see your faces if you are able. So if you're able to connect your video feature by selecting the camera icon in the lower left-hand corner of your screen, we would greatly appreciate it. Your audio is muted by default um, to avoid any background noise and feedback. Um, and we ask that you do remain muted um, unless that you have a question or a comment and we'd love to hear from you. If you are to unmute, there is a, um, on the lower left-hand um, ribbon, there is a mute. Um, icon that you can um, click on to mute and unmute yourself. If you're dialed in, you can press uh, six star six to unmute and that'll also mute yourself back as star six. Um, you can communicate through that chat box as well. And that is in the that um, bottom ribbon in the middle of your screen there. So if you haven't already, we would ask you to take a moment to type your name, your title, your organization in the chat box there. And so that we know who's joining us today. So the National Rural Health Resource Center is a nonprofit organization dedicated to sustaining and improving health care in rural communities. The center is the TA provider for the Delta Region Community Health Systems Development Program. And the Delta Region Community Health Systems Development Program is funded by the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy in collaboration with the Delta Regional Authority. And the center is committed to diversity, equity, inclusion, and anti-racism, and building a culture where difference is valued. We have a, a lot more resources on our website where you can learn more about that commitment. We do have a few upcoming webinars that we would like to draw your attention to and um, ask that you join us for those. We have a um, Overview of the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy that's coming up on April 5th. And on April 12th, um, that will be a federal grants kind of one on one, just an overview of federal grants and, um, and the process to apply for those and kind of what that looks like, what to look for. So it'll just be a great overall webinar. Both of those will be great web overall webinars to come to. So today we are, we'll be hearing from Clark Conover. Uh, before I introduce Clark, I believe we have some pre-polling questions. Caleb will launch those. Thank you. So you can complete those. As you're completing those, I'll introduce Clark. Um, so Clark has worked with the Health Resources and Services Administration for 23 years. He is currently serving as the supervisor of the Bureau of Health Workforce, Division of Regional Operations, the Kansas City office. Prior to working for the federal government, Mr. Conover was employed for four years with State Public Health Policy Group in Des Moines, Iowa, working with nonprofit state organizations. Um, Mr. Conover completed a degree in agricultural journalism from uh, uh, Iowa State University and obtained an MHA degree from A.T. Steele University. He currently resides in Liberty, Missouri with his wife and his two children. So Clark, I will turn it over to you. Well, thank you so much, Kim, and, and welcome. Um, I want to preview this by saying the slide deck, it will be available uh, for all of you to uh, download and have. Uh, I won't read the slides too, I promise. So there'll be some information in there that you'll be able to, and some links that you'll be able to get more information. Um, I want to leave this presentation with one message, which is not only do we want Delta Regional Commission uh, participants applying and participate in the National Service Corps, we need you applying. You folks serve some of the neediest, underserved, underinsured populations in the country. And this program melds perfectly with your mission to uh, recruit and retain physicians, dentists, physician assistants, 
nurses, mental health professionals into these communities. It's critically important that we work in concert. Um, next slide, please. So HRSA, as you know, supports more than 90 programs. The Federal Office of World Policy being one of our key partners. Um, and again, there's over 3,000 awardees and all sorts of walks of life from HIV AIDS to the Community Health Center Program to the National Service Corps. Next slide, please. Uh, the Bureau of Health Workforce, one of the bureaus under HRSA. Um, we, we focus on serving underserved populations through increasing the healthcare workforce. Uh, through loans, grants, loan repayment, scholarship opportunities to the entire Delta region. Um, we want to recruit, retain primary health care providers in your communities. And we'll do that a number of ways. We'll talk about some features during this presentation that we can bring to you and offer to add value. Next slide, please. Access, supply, distribution, quality. That's the four tenets, the four keystones of the Bureau of Health Workforce. It's what we provide through our grant programs, almost 90 of them uh, that we have through our, our office. And we coalesce well with the Federal Office of Wealth Policy around these four tenants as well. HRSA is all rowing in the same direction uh, to create access, to increase the supply, to solve the maldistribution and to increase quality. And I always do this. So I that's why I owe, next time I'm in DC, Wendy and staff lunch. I, I start rolling because I'm so excited. But Wendy and our staff in the Division of External Affairs will be putting in um, links into the chat room. We'll be putting additional information. And like I said, Wendy, I, I owe you lunch now. I, I sincerely apologize for not starting with you because you are so critically important to seeing this mission forward. Next slide, please. Uh, last year, we celebrated our 50th anniversary, 50 years of continual funding, support from Congress and the administrations over 50 years, multiple presidencies, multiple con Congresses. They have seen the value. Now, this is a reauthorization year. Uh, clearly, we're hoping for more support going forward. Um, and again, There'll be more information on that you can find through your other partners, but we are so pleased that we have congressional administration support to continue record funding amounts this past year. Over 20,000 participants in the National Service Corps and the Nurse Corps nationwide. Next slide, please. And here's just the timeline and milestones of our funding. We'll let you read this at your own leisure and some links. Next slide, please. Where are we now? Certainly behavioral health care is a critical underserved component in this country. Um, you see a number of opportunities from the federal office of overall policy. One just came out today, I might add. Um, more information from the HCOP programs and some NOFOs around opioid. Again, I get a lot of my information from the FRHP uh, newsletter. Uh, it comes into my inbox. If you've not signed up for it, I'm sure Kim can help you get that done. But clearly, it's a great source of information. Our program reinforces their message. 47% of, of, of our providers in the program currently are in the mental health field. Nurse practitioners and PAs, clearly, almost one third, clearly one of the primary components of healthcare at rural health clinics and primary care clinics and physicians, dentists, hygienists, nurse midwives, and registered nurses and pharmacists are brand new to the National Service Corps through our substance abuse disorder and loan repayment program. We'll highlight that a little bit later. Those numbers will grow. Uh, we're only in the third year of those programs. What's not in here is our nursing program. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Next slide, please. Again, diversity and field strength. Next slide, please. Again, some more demographic information. We'll let you peruse that. Next slide. And again, looking at diversity across workforce and National Service Corps nationally. Um, next slide, please. Oral health diversity. Next slide, please. And I talked a little bit about record funding. We've been so fortunate with this with the support 
Um, we're looking at, again, over 20,000 people, record applications, record new awards in all of our programs. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the specifics, but you can go back and look at these numbers uh, after when you have an opportunity to download the PowerPoint presentation, and that will coalesce with some of the messages we're going to bring forth. Next slide, please. 20,000. We're very proud of this. Serving 21 million folks. Uh, just an incredible impact footprint this program has had nationwide. Next slide, please. Uh, where is World Health Workforce? Certainly, National Service Corps serves about 7,600 serving rural communities. About 50% are of the rural residency time at rural sites. We look at 42% of training sites through our advanced nursing education program on rural America. Our teaching health graduate medical education program, 93% training medically underserved urban or rural communities. That's a tremendous opportunity for folks in the residency medical education programs to get in your, to your communities. As we talked about, our behavioral workforce development programs are growing and now 50% are having experience in their graduate and undergraduate training with substance abuse disorders, meeting the opioid, methamphetamine, and other epidemics that plague our rural communities. Next slide, please. Uh, real quick at the agenda, and we'll walk into the first one, which is loan repayment programs. Next slide, please. Keystone of our programs, na the National Service Corps Loan Repayment Program with the scholarship program is 50 years old. And the link that we just dropped in will get you to the, our website, which has a plethora of information on the slides. We just skim the surface. So please go to our website at hersa.gov, BHW. It'll be in there. Next slide, please. Traditional loan repayment program, $50,000 for two years of service. This is our most popular program. This is our longest running program open to all uh, health professional students uh, around mental health, oral health, and primary care. You are able after your first two years to renew in one year continuations, as long as you remain your as you remain employed at a, at a National Service Corps site, you maintain your license and you spent the $50,000 on your loan. So if you go out and buy a boat, you can't continue the program. So we have to prove in that you have to prove in there that your folks are managing that money correctly and buying down their student debt. Next slide, please. Um, the currently open is the loan repayment cycle. There's going to be some uh, maternity care target areas. There'll be a program this summer that's going to come out looking at this program is not currently open. I apologize. We'll be coming out this summer around providers, OBGYN, family medicine, FP, the, the do OB, and certified nurse midwives. There'll be a pilot program this summer. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. It'll be on our website. You can sign up for the e-blast. We want to get you on the information. We will inundate your inbox, I swear. We also tweet and use Facebook. So please uh, take advantage of our opportunities. And we'll have some links at the end of the presentation to that. Next slide, please. Again, the loan repayment program is open right now through April 25th. If your providers, if you have eligible providers, we'll walk through who those are. We need them to apply to the loan repayment program. We have a, we have a video of the HRSA YouTube channel that talks a lot about this. This will give your providers and yourself some background. And You'll have the opportunity to, inter to interface with providers and advertise your openings in the Health Workforce Connector. I want you to put a pin in that because we'll have a link to it a little bit later. That's an important feature we offer, though. So remember that Health Workforce Connector. Big message. Right now, you can apply for all three of our loan repayment programs. They're open till April 25th. And please look at those opportunities. We'll walk through some more of those. Next slide, please. <coughs> Excuse me. Eligibility, U.S. citizen, currently working or apply to work by July 25th, you have to start in a National Service Corps approved site, uh, have unpaid debt, so you have to have qualified debt. Uh, that trip to spring break that you put on your visa card does not count. You're looking at to school tuition, reasonable education costs, and reasonable living costs uh, segregated from all other debts. And then you have to be licensed to practice in the state uh, that you're in. Uh, and at the bottom are all the eligible disciplines. Next slide, please. 
program number two, the substance abuse disorder workforce loan repayment program. We just dropped in the link to it. Next slide. This offers up to $75,000 for a single three-year commitment. Must be trained to, and licensed to provide SUD treatments at an NHSC SUD approved treatment facility. Uh, we'll have a link to the state leads for the Bureau of Health Workforce Division of Regional Operations later, and you can communicate with those state leads to get yourself opted in. There's no deadline for the opt-in process. It's 365 days a year, 24-7. Uh, you just have to provide us the documentation that we'll list to you in the behavioral health checklist. Essentially, we want the commitment that you're seeing SUD treatment. Next slide, please. Eligibility information and all the, and how priority is given. We give priority to folks in opioid treatment programs, the OTPs. Second priority goes to those with specialized in SUD training. Um, the next priority then goes to license certifications and SUD training. So master's level SUD abuse counselor. Next slide, please. Um, so some of these op opportunities, your RNs and your uh, pharmacists are eligible to apply for the SUD program, as well as this rural community loan repayment program. What makes it different? Next slide, please. Is this is only eligible to USDA, not CMS, USDA certified rural communities. There's additional resources. We give a we give additional bonus payments. It's a hundred thousand dollars for three year commitments. We are trying to drive providers into rural communities. And again, you must be trained and licensed to provide SUD treatment at an NHSC approved SUD treatment facility. It's the same process to opt in for both programs. If you're in a USDA rural community, you're eligible. Again, it is, dis it is different from CMS. Some communities, folks tell us we are rural. You know, we joke, go down to your ASCS office and complain to them, but clearly this is what we're limited by. Please don't go to your ASCS office. Um, this is what we're limited by, by the legislation. Next slide, please. And again, eligibility and disciplines for the RCORP program, again, in a rural community uh, by the definition of standards. Next slide, please. Student to service. We want you to encourage anyone that is going currently going to medical school, nurse practitioner school, nurse midwife school, or PA school in their final year of training to apply to our student to service loan repayment program. There's a payback obligation at a HIPSA of 14 or above once they complete their training or residency. Next slide, please. It's a great opportunity to train your own. It's a $120,000 reward award, not reward, award, tax-free loan repayment. You owe then three years of full-time service or six years of half-time, three to six of the math for the same amount of money with continued service eligible providers may be able through our loan repayment programs to pay off all their student debt. Um, I had a dentist once tell me, and as we know, dentists tend to be business people, that $120,000 paid on your debt while you are in training or residency, will avert over 20 years, a quarter million dollars of interest payments. Again, I've not run the math myself, but certainly clearly you are averting future interest payments by paying down that student debt early, what's still in deferment. And we get to put these folks in rural communities. We've done a real good job. I know a lot of you are, are working with rural residency programs. A lot of those kids just match now. We have worked really well with the rural residency programs. Missouri is a great example at the University of Missouri, where we've really encouraged those students who've matched now to apply for this student to service loan repayment program. Next slide, please. Eligibility, same as all. Next slide, please. DDS, doctors, nurse practitioners, certified nurse midwives. I believe I said PAs, that was incorrect. Uh, I apologize for that. Next slide, please. Uh, take that back, PAs are eligible now. Um, I apologize. We have so many programs, uh, and it is tough to keep them straight, which is why we're gonna give the slide deck to you, which is why Wendy is putting the links in. Next slide, please. 
scholarship program been around 50 years this is another one of our keystone hallmark programs folks apply for the scholarship is highly competitive the scholarships will then pay for your tuition a stipend books etc in return you always service obligation we'll walk through that in these next slides please must be pursuing a degree in medicine dentistry or postgraduate degree for nurse midwifery pas nurse practitioners specializing in adult medicine family medicine geriatrics pediatrics psychiatrics or women's health a wide range of folks now the mental health professionals with the exception of psychiatric pas nps and physicians are not eligible these are licensable degrees in the primary care medical and dental fields um if you have folks to grow your own we want you to encourage them to have them look at our scholarship program next slide please two to four years of support and then year for year payback for full time uh you double that for half time half time is 20 hours a week full time is 40 hours a week in your clinics um there is a HIPSA score requirement. Those requirements will come out approximately June 1 of their year going into service. So the final year residency or their graduation year from training programs. Uh, those, those service, those HIPSA scores are higher. We're trying to force, we are forcing these scholars that we've government has paid for their service or for, sorry, for their schooling into high need primary care, dental care, communities that's, and organizations that serve them. Next slide, please. There's the eligibility. Up to four years of payback, I'm sorry, up to four years of scholarship is allowed for the physicians and dentists. Next slide, please. Site selection, again, upon graduation, high HIPSAs, while in service, scholars also earn a competitive salary paid by their site. So it's a great deal for scholars. We'll tell them after, you know, by the age of physicians, by the age of 30, you're walking out debt free with four years of service in a primary care underserved community where you don't have to put out your own shingle. You can come. There's opportunity for you to learn from experienced physicians with HR professionals, the entire thing that your organizations provide them, an opportunity then for you over those four years to work to retain them, get them in their communities, get them involved in church, synagogue, get them on the school board, get their kids in school, the opportunity for you to have them plant roots and put down long-term commitments in your organizations. I was actually born in a critical access hospital in Iowa. We had a national service corps provider that was there for 20 years. Uh, we he was an outstanding individual it was a great service for that community of that county of 4500 people we have success stories like this all over the delta region and across the country next slide please member stories next slide if you want to know more about members we have our youtube channel you can click on and hear from physicians dentists mental health professionals about what their experience has been in national service corps so if you don't believe me, you can believe them. Next slide, please. How awards are determined. Again, on the YouTube channel, we'll talk more about that. And the link is there. Next slide, please. Other loan and payment scholarship programs. Next slide. Uh, states each have their loan and payment programs called SLURP. Uh, it will vary state to state. Uh, clearly, if you search by your state and SLURP, you can find information and link to those. Next slide. Um, we also have the Nurse Corps program. And this nursing program will be available. It's available in the fall. It's available to your RNs and your nurse practitioners and nurse midwives. It's available to not only your primary care clinics, but your medical clinic, but your hospitals, your public health departments, your VA clinics. Uh, we have you know, folks in the in the veterans homes, the nursing homes in America, and, and other nursing homes. Uh, it's a tremendous program. There's a scholarship program for nurses and a loan repayment program for nurses. Please go to the link to learn more about that. But we are really proud to have record numbers of folks participating in our nursing program. Next slide, please. And here's some 
And again, these slides will give you the information about LRP for nurses by comparison. Next slide, please. And again, approved site types are called critical shortage facilities. Uh, we'll put a link in the chat of how uh, you can find a shortage facility. It's real easy to apply for them. In fact, when your nurses are applying, if you're already not one, as they're applying for the loan repayment, they can actually concurrently, consecutively apply your site, apply for your site too. We make it easy uh, for sites or critical shortage facilities to become eligible to place nurses. Next slide. Loan repayment scholarship, and again, more information about that. Next slide. Field strength, 3,900 nurses at 2,500 sites right now, serving 4 million patients. 23% of our nurse corps work in community health centers or lookalikes. The other 75% are working in hospitals, nursing homes, rural health clinics, public health departments, et cetera. Next slide, please. Here's the link. Again, we have a link in the chat. Here's the critical storage facilities. Anywhere where nurses are, are in a health professional shortage area, either primary care or mental health care HIPSAs are eligible. Next slide, please. Scholarship program, much like our loan, much like the National Service Corps program, is for nurses, RNs, nurse practitioners, certified nurse midwives who are going through school. Next slide. Uh, eligible to scholarship if you accept or enroll in a baccalaureate associate graduate program, and you must work in exchange in a critical shortage facility of a HIPSA score, primary care, or mental health of 14 and above once you come out. Next slide. Cover tuition, eligible fees, annual payment, and monthly stipend. Your requirements when you come out are to obtain your license, pass your NS. NCLEX exam and get a license in that state in a position. Next slide. And again, opportunities for your nurses. Next slide. Support resources. Next slide, please. R opening late April, early May will be the site opportunities, site application cycle. Um, we do not have a specific date yet. We know it'll be on or around April 27-ish. It will depend a little bit on when the technology, the online application platform is prepared and ready. IT is out of my hands, folks. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you say the same thing. Um, so we are dependent upon their opportunity, them to get that ready, which is why we don't have a specific date yet. But clearly be looking for that. And you can sign up on our links. You can get an e-blast or email. Uh, a Twitter blast that will say it's open, go. Um, approved sites can be in rural, urban, or tribal communities. And to become an eligible site type, there's a link there. Next slide, please. Uh, and again, to that link, we'll get, bring you the eligible site types. Next slide. Our SUD treatment facilities for the SUD, LRP, and the rural SUD program. Uh, again, here's all the type of opportunities and all these sites can come in for National Service Corps improvement. As long as you're in the health professional storage area, RHCs have auto HIPSAs, as do FQHCs. So again, there's some opportunities for vast majority of your sites to be eligible. Next slide, please. Again, there's some more information about the HIPSAs and Wendy just put a link in. They'll give you a lot of what all these different symbols mean. Next slide. Again, the site site will open April 27-ish. I've been told that if it does not open April 27, please don't call. It may open shortly thereafter. It will then close approximately six weeks. Uh, that date will change a little bit, but please get signed up. And at the bottom is a state lead contact for the Division of Regional Operations, where we will uh, have the opportunity to help you opt in for the SUD program. And you can also ask questions about eligibility, about HIPSAs, about how the uh, everything works with the critical access hospitals, getting them qualified in your states. Next slide. I put a pin this earlier. This Health Workforce Connector is a tremendous opportunity. This is free to all National Service Corps and Nurse Corps active sites. You can go in, boutique the Health Workforce Connector, meaning you can put links to school districts, 
to your hospital network groups, to your Delta Regional Commission partners. You can advertise everything from janitors to physicians on these sites. It is a great chance for you to have the opportunity to direct folks to you. We've seen studies put out by academic medical centers that says the majority of medical residents are now accessing information about your sites after hours. While they're on breaks in their, res in their rotation training at two in the morning or at 10 at night, they're accessing your information more than they are during regular business hours. So the opportunity to have an online footprint, an online presence through this workforce connector, 45,000 sites currently now use it, 5,900 plus opportunities. We want you to be a part of this. We also have their Division of, Edu of External Affairs or DEA folks, the virtual job fairs. We have specific job fairs for nurses, rural communities, urban communities, et cetera. The VJFs are very popular. So we, we encourage you the day they open, so we get that information early to come in and it's first come first serve and they fill up fast. What we do is they're Google rooms and they can actually go into your room and one-on-one -on -one conversate with you uh, and find out more about your site. Next slide, slide please. And again, I talked a lot about Workforce Connector. Here's some additional information that you can peruse. Next slide. And how to put on the job seeker profiles. Again, the link we put in the chat will walk through all this. Next slide. Site like profiles, again, through the chat, it'll, it'll tell you how to, uh, how to do this. There'll be a link to this information. Next slide. We talked about the virtual job fairs. It's a great opportunity. This details what the VJF does. Next slide. The, the fair events or Zoom events, 30-minute time slots for job seekers. Uh, we can accommodate up to 30 sites, up to three to 30 to three and a half hours long. We have multiple VJFs during the during the day, I'm sorry, during the day, during the year. And our folks at DEA, Wendy and her colleagues just do an amazing job putting these VJFs on. The feedback has been overwhelmingly positive and we've been able to put a lot of folks in front of folks. Next slide, please. Uh, again, we talked about some of the links, please share it with your staff and we can tweet at you. Uh, we actually are, are putting uh, organizations and the physicians or clinicians are looking at into our tweets with pictures of your sites, with links to your sites. They just do a great job with our online presence. It's, it's really impressive uh, what our folks back in DEA or DC are doing. Uh, a really, really impressive job they're doing, and they're doing it for you. Next slide. Again, some more resources on our YouTube channel. Next slide. Our regional offices, we have 10 across the country, plus a administrative office in Rockville, Maryland at our HQ. Uh, and there's a contact on the NHSC website at that link. I am in region seven overseeing Kansas City. So certainly part of the Delta region we extend into. Uh, next slide. Questions. Most important slide on the entire uh, presentation. If you go to the next slide as we ask questions, support resources, links, and my name, and my, and my name. And you can find me going through the DRO website. Now, all right, Kim, what do we have? Time to play Stump the Chump. Yeah, that was great information, Clark. Lots of information there. Um, now, yeah, you all, now's your opportunity to ask any questions. You can do that in the chat. You can do that, um, you can unmute your line. Um, to ask any clarifying questions. Caleb's got that poll pulled up for us. He is on top of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Sure. Again, we'll make sure you get all these links and that are in the resource manual so you can peruse the PowerPoint, share it with your staff uh, and, and your executives um, after the presentation. I am. Um, thank you. Hi, Clark. Thank you. Great presentation. I think this is my second time on here. I'm really trying to become a psych. I'm a nurse practitioner and I own my own practice. Okay. It's for profit. So I'm really trying, trying to become a psych so mm -hmm. that I can get some assistance. Any advice? Absolutely. Um, our, our new site cycle will open 
Uh, again, April 27-ish. I need to clearly clarify it may not be the 27th. It may not be the 28th, but it'll be in that time frame. Um, you can come in then. There's a link, whatever state you're in, to your DRO state lead. Get a hold of them. The requirements are you have to have a sliding fee scale. You have to accept everyone. So you can't turn the Medicaid folks away, for example. You got to accept everyone. Um, and you have to be in a health professional shortage area, open and operational in your state, and see the folks that, that you need to see in the underserved communities. Um, for the SUD piece, there's a behavioral checklist we'll walk you through. Uh, but, but clearly being in a HIPSA and off your slide and fee scale, are probably the two biggest pieces. And there is a uh, how to apply for a site on our website um, that you can go to. But call that state lead and really have them walk through it uh, with you. Uh, or you can email me and I can get uh, and I can get you in touch with them um, and do a warm handoff. My e I did not put my email. I'll try this again. Typing faster, than, talking faster than I type. Okay. Uh, that is my email. So if, there, if you have questions, I can do a warm handoff, Mary. But yeah, we, we want to get you on board. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? Feel free. I mean, there are some things in the chat. And um, Wendy has done a, done a great job. Thank you oh. so much for putting those links in there. Um, so yes, thank you so much. I've tried to copy those as well as those have been put in there. In case anybody wants to copy those, I'm happy to send those out as well. But yeah, did a great and job. It, everyone needs to give Wendy a virtual high five. <laughs> we, we can't do this without her. So thank you, Wendy. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I don't want to take up time sitting here staring at my tie. So Wendy or Kim, if there's no other questions, uh, if you think of one after, please get a hold of your state lead uh, or or one of our maybe webinars in the future and ask that question. More than happy to answer, ask and answer everything. Mantra for the day, we want you to be a site. And if you're currently a site, we want you to apply for our loan repayment programs today. Thank you, Kim.